the beginning of another week. Good evening. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from our news up at Adesawe Kanda. Also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okanse. Coming up tonight here on Ghana Tonight, go straight into the issues. As organized labor adamant insists on carrying through the announced nationwide strike beginning October 10 to press home demands on the fight against illegal mining. But government is saying it is surprised at the turn of events. We have a statement just coming through from the information ministry expressing surprise at the stance of labor. Stay with us. We have a conversation on that. Also tonight, Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission, Martin Kwekwe, you see, justifies the continuous issuance of mining licenses despite the calls for a ban on the small-scale mining. So society has been responding to this. We have a conversation, as always, here on Ghana Tonight. Stay with us. Also, here on your election command center, anti LGBTQ plus campaigners are saying they are ready to hit the streets tomorrow to protest the delayed hearing of the cases regarding the sexual human, that's the human sexual rights and family values bill. Uh, but the judicial service has also been explaining why the hearing of these cases have delayed. We, we have a conversation on, on this matter with one of the chief architects of this demonstration tomorrow. Stay with us here on Ghana Tonight. Also, manifesto check is in the package. As always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and on X. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Organized Labour says it will proceed with a nationwide strike despite its meeting with President Akufuado asking for more time. Spokesperson for Organized Labour Joshua Ansan says Organized Labour will not back down. Meanwhile, government has three working days to prevent the strike. The President has not said anything. We had a discussion. We said by the 10th of October, if nothing has been done, there will be a nationwide strike. The president discussed the issues with us, our demands with us, and what he's able to do is what he told us. And it's written, we will lay on this uh, paper. That is all. So Despite several calls for a ban on all mining activities, mining licenses are still being issued by the Minerals Commission. Responding to questions from Parliament's Assurance Committee, the Ministry said it has not received any communication from government to stop issuing mining licenses. I have not received any instructions from government or minister to say, can you hold on? So, respectively, as I sit here and as we speak, my officers are online processing applications for small scale that have been received over the period, maybe today, last week, last year, because sometimes when applications come in, you have to check to see whether or not he meets all the criteria. The judicial service says that Supreme Court's delay in hearing the anti-LGBTQ plus case is because parties involved are yet to complete the required processes at a press briefing, the Registrar of the Supreme Court, Justice Ellen Ofei Aye, explained that the courts will hear cases when the parties file the needed document. Meanwhile, proponents of the anti-LGBTQ bill have served notice of a protest tomorrow. On the case of Dr. Amanda Odoi versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General was filed on 11 June 2023 on grounds that Parliament had contravened Article 108 of the 1992 Constitution in the passage of the bill. Parliament was supposed to file its defense within 14 days of the notice of the action. However, Parliament filed its defense on 14th March 2024. The Attorney General has not filed a defense in the form of a statement of case. Finance 
Minister Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam has revealed that foreign companies are making a return to Ghana, citing the country's economic rebound and positive growth in the first half of 2024. He emphasized that the improving economic conditions are restoring investor confidence and attracting foreign investments back into the country. We were told that some companies left Ghana when the economy went down. But it's also important to note that companies are returning to Ghana because they see the economy is growing, the trajectory is positive, and hopefully they can partner with us to move the, the growth of the economy uh, further. Over the weekend, the Confederation of African Football asked Kwesi Apia to step down from one of his roles due to a conflict of interest. The former Ghana coach was serving on the Executive Council of the GFA and is also currently the head coach of Sudan. With Ghana set to face Sudan, CAF sent a strong warning to the 64-year-old. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, organized labor, adamant, insisting on carrying through their now strike. We're getting to that. But coming up next, we go straight into the issues of uh, licensing and martyrs arising. They will give you details of that shortly here on, on Ghana Tonight. And uh, we'll give you details of that. Stay with us here on, on Ghana Tonight. And the martyrs are rising. This is very, very heavy on the plate this morning. And there's so many reactions. We just got a statement from the Information Ministry. We'll share with you shortly. But coming up next, the Chief Executive Officer of the Minerals Commission, Martin Kweko AAC, justifies the continuous issuance of mining licenses despite the calls for a ban on small-scale mining. Civil society has been responding to this would we'll have a conversation on this matter shortly here on Ghana tonight. But it, all of this started with us here um, on uh, on TV3. In fact, over the weekend on Key Point, Samuel Okujetua Blackwa, who is a member of parliament for the North Town constituency, is a member of the Assurances Committee of Parliament. In fact, the chair of that Assurances Committee of Parliament. The Minerals Commission CEO appeared before that committee earlier today. There were some specific questions on that. But on Key Point on Saturday, Samuel Okujetua Blackwa detailed some mining licenses that had been issued to companies as early as the 3rd of October, which was just a few days ago, when this call for a ban on small-scale mining has been going on for almost two months now. This is what he said. Take a look. Alfred, you have not heard the worst. <laughs> Let me reveal to you this morning that to my shock, and I'm sure many Ghanaians will be shocked this morning, particularly organized labor, mm. to my shock, whilst the president was meeting organized labor, mm -hmm. that same day, will you believe that new licenses were being issued for these companies to start mining that same day, ah. the 3rd of October. Shocking. And this, 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 this data is available on the Ghana Mining Repository. And I'm going to go through the companies. I see. Whilst the meeting was going on, 11 companies were issued with licenses to start mining on the 3rd of October. 11 companies. 11 and they are Rich Land Mining and Trading Enterprise, Confidence Mining Enterprise, Grade Mining Enterprise, Ajobia Mining Enterprise, Techimresu Mining Enterprise, Precious Awudu Mining Enterprise, Internal Mining Enterprise, certainly Internal Affairs. Well, so that was Samuel Okuja to Ablakwa on Saturday. Now, that data source that he mentioned, that's the Ghana Mining Repository, 
It's open source data. You're watching me right now. You can go on that site and authenticate what he said for yourself. So we went there here on Ghana tonight. And that's what is behind me. So follow me closely. This is the Ghana Mining Repository website on Google. This is it. This is how it looks like. When you go there, now you click on licenses. It takes you to the number of licenses issued. In fact, the, the license type and then also the companies that have been awarded these licenses and the start date. That is when these companies can start mining. This is the Ghana Mining Repository. And we found out that indeed, 11 licenses were actually issued on the 3rd of October. Today is the 7th, just some four days ago. So then specific questions were asked as to why this is happening, right? And, and especially when uh, there's the general call and also the public outcry about the impact of illegal, illegal mining as we speak. Take a look at this. This is what we found out. This is the list of the 11 companies, right? On the Ghana Mining Repository. On the 3rd of October, Ajobia Mining Enterprise was giving the start date, the license code SSMLT235-2024. On the same day, 3rd of October, Confidence Mining Enterprise, Techi Miresu Mining Enterprise, also giving a license on that same, in fact, the start date. So essentially what this means is that, based on the information on this website, these licenses are activated as we speak, or have been activated, because the start date as issued is, 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 is just some four days ago. Then a Dikamfu Titefo Mining and Trading Enterprise. On the same day, 3rd of October, Precious Awudu Mining Enterprise. Then there was Osajifo Aba Mining and Trading Enterprise. You also have Richland Mining and Trading Enterprise, Internal Mining Enterprise, and Techi Mresu Mining Enterprise. And take a look at this. And bear in mind that this same, the Techi Mresu has been repeated twice, meaning this particular company was giving two mining licenses start date on the 3rd of October. Techi Mresu, the first code we saw was SSMLT242-2024. Another Techim Resu, SSMLT240-2024. So there are two licenses to this same Techim Resu mining enterprise. What we've done beyond this now is, is to seek some information concerning the owners of these companies. And, and stay with us here on Ghana tonight because in the, in the coming days, we're getting to that particular aspect of the conversation. And it's not just on the 3rd of October you see all this. A, a Jobia as well was given two mining licenses, same start date, 3rd of October. Then you have Future Mining Enterprise. And then on the 2nd of October, Sunny, Sunny Day Limited, all giving mining start date, their licenses start date of 3rd of October. That begs the question, why is the Minerals Commission continuously giving start dates and issuing mining licenses at a time when there is that clarion call for a ban on small-scale mining. This you can find on the, on, on the mining repository site. This is a question that was asked the Mining Minerals Commission CEO when he appeared before this Government Assurances Committee earlier today. And this is the explanation that he gave to why they are continuously issuing mining licenses when this call for a ban on small-scale mining is ongoing and why really what the situation is right now. We're going to hear from him and, and exactly why this is the situation. And we'll bring in Awala Sewa shortly. And then also uh, Austin Gum is going to be joining us for the next conversation about the position and impact of, of this uh, that Labour has taken. We'll hear from, from that shortly. Uh, but this is what happened at the Assurances Committee of Parliament earlier today and what Martin AC said. Uh, in that response by Samuel Okujotua, who is the chair of that committee, that question that he asked of him, why these licenses were issued on the 3rd of October when we are talking about a ban. Take a look. To hold licensing. I have not received any instructions 
from government or minister to say, can you hold on? So respectively, as I sit here and as we speak, my officers are online processing applications for small scale that have been received over the period, maybe today, last week, last year, because sometimes when applications come in, you have to check to see whether or not he meets all the criteria. For him, the continuous issuance of licenses will reduce the influx of illegal mines. When my minister took office in 2001, the first thing he told me was that, Martin, the delay in issuing licenses, it is what is creating the problem. So, cut the delays. What did you do? We went online. So what he that will take a year to now, even a week or two, they upload, we do the inspection, and then they go to invest. When you don't give them the license, what they will do is that they'll go and do it illegally. So it says when you don't give them the license, they will do so, they'll go and do illegal mining. But is there any justification for that position that the Minerals Commission boss is espousing now? Because if the over 1,500 licenses that have been issued between 2017 and now has not stopped people from going into illegal mining, then will there be any justification for this position? That's the question we ask. Awala Sewa is the national coordinator of Eco-Conscious Citizens, one of the foremost uh, CSOs, environmental CSOs we have in this country. Awala, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First off, the Minerals Commission CEO makes the point that if, if the, the new demand is that m minerals and uh, also these that's issues relating to mining in terms of licenses should not be issued, then that's a new one. But the issue right now is, is illegal mining. So there hasn't been any directive to him to stop issuing mining licenses, despite the call that you and all of us are making for government to be decisive on the ban against illegal mining. What's your take on this? most disappointing it's most disappointing i mean he knows very well that uh, one of the demands by cso's one of the demands by organized labor is a pause in small scale mining um organized labor has asked for a ban we've asked for a pause and we're saying a pause in small scale mining because you're unable to monitor and uh, somebody having a license doesn't mean that he's going to do the right thing I have a driving license. Does that mean that I'm going to obey the highway code? Of course not. So you, you, you need to have, um, you know, balances, checks and balances. And we know that the monitoring agencies are either unable or at, unwilling to do their job. So that is why we said pause community mining because of the existential threats we face. Even those with licenses are engaged in illegal mining insofar as they go outside the parameters of their license. So for discussions to be going on, and then the Minerals Commission is still uh, issuing licenses. When it has been, one of the demands has been that licenses that have been issued should be revoked. It's marks of bad faith, and uh, just it's just disappointing. It's marks of bad faith. I see. So in your argument, essentially, you make the point that to the extent that you, there's a call for even a, a consideration of a ban on small-scale mining, it should have informed some level of discretion on the part of the Minerals Commission not to necessarily wait for an order or a directive to stop issuing mining licenses, even at this time, as early as the 3rd of October? To continue issuing licenses, you are treating the demands with contempt. You have a demand that stop issuing licenses. In fact, organized labor asks for a ban, and then you are still issuing licenses. What are you saying? You are saying that I frankly... I don't have any regard for your demands, and I am going on business as usual. I'm totally, um, I'm totally unaware, or I don't care that there's a rise in kidney disease. I don't care about the existential threat we face. I'm just going to go on issuing licenses. And indeed, many people say there's no fight against illegal mining, and it's prospering because those who are supposed to be the firefighters are the arsonists. And then those who try and raise awareness about it, like the demonstrators, they were rather um, refused police bail, and then they were refused the court bail, and it's now that I think the court has uh, granted bail. Then you contrast that with illegal miners who are operating with impunity, and nobody is doing anything about it. You contrast it with the case in Atronsu, where illegal miners are poisoning the Atronsu stream, 
The police initially arrested them, then gave them police bail. They've gone right back to engaging in illegal mining and uh, nothing is being done to them, you know. So it gives the impression that we're really not interested in the welfare of Ghanaians. We don't really care about the existential threats we face. And I can say that I'm very, very disappointed in the Minerals Commission here. And I recall that at the launch for um, um, Poison for Gold, I remember that he said that he doesn't allow his children to drink tap water. And I'm not sure if many people are aware that even with the water from Ghana company, when it's clear, it doesn't mean it's free of heavy metals. It could be full of mercury. So he has that information, will not let his children drink uh, tap water, but he's very happy to issue licenses, even in forest reserves, for the water bodies to be poisoned, for other people to drink. I think this is untenable. Uh, uh, well, I, I thank you so much. You know, in fact, you reflect the, the sentiments of a number of people who are commenting about this and the position by the Minerals Commission. But thank you. Aula Sewa is uh, the national coordinator of Conscious Citizens still on, on this. The Minerals Commission boss at that same hearing today, uh, the, the Governor Assurances Committee, did indicate that there's mining going on right behind a police station somewhere in the Etiwa area in the eastern region. And he had complained about this to, to, to the police, and nothing has been done about it. Take a look. To mine a water body. So in the first place, anybody who goes to the water body to go and mine is engaged in a criminal activity. We need to... We need to we need to be clear about that. He's engaged in a criminal activity. If we have to give any special permit for anybody to do anything in a water body, is what we do for VRA. That from time to time they come for this special permit to dredge the estuary to allow these water snakes that, that host the Biazia parasite to go away. We do that and that's a proper thing. Outside that, there's no way we we'll tell you we'll give you a license to go and mine a mineral in a water body. We don't do that. So anybody who gets into the water body is, is involved in illegality. We have, there's no way we we'll tell you we'll give you a license to go and mine a mineral in the water body. We don't do that. So anybody who gets into the water body is, is involved in illegality. We have reported severally that behind a Nyan police station, people are doing stuff there which we have not permitted. So how, how come that the police is not taking to, action? To us? So those guys that Minerals Commission has brought to the attention of MUSEC or DISEC, depending on where it is. The Nyinam one, for example, that Galamse is taking place behind the police station. So it's like we've told you Galamse is having a job, sits under proper, that is behind this new block. Respectfully, Honorable Okujeto and Chair of this respectful Honorable Committee, the Minerals Commission officer has done his work. I am not saying that we have also not let Ghana down or we are 100% right. Because they have told you that there are instances where people have had all their rights and they have made mistakes. Of course, that's why they are inspectors. Oh, that's the Minerals Commission boss verdict there. Galamse is happening behind the police station in, in Yenem. That's him right there. But let's stay a bit further on this matter. Coming up next, organized labor, they're adamant. They have taken a position quite clear, insisting on carrying through their announced nationwide strike beginning October 10 to press home their demands on the fight against illegal mining. But government says it is surprised at the turn of events. We'll tell you why and exactly what this position taken by uh, the labor on this. There was, there was a meeting today and what you're seeing on the screen there is that sense of confusion that characterized a part of the uh, meeting by organized labor today. They have indicated they will proceed with a nationwide strike despite its meeting with President Kofuado earlier today. The General Secretary General of the TUC clearly indicated 10th of October they're going on strike. Take a look. The president has not said anything. We had a discussion we said by the 10th of October, if nothing has been done, there will be a nationwide strike. The president discussed the issues with us, our demands with us, and what he's able to do is what is told us, and it's written vividly on this uh, paper. That is all. We've sent a series of uh, notices to your outfit 
to the extent that we've had a committee with you headed by uh, Ken, uh, Honorable Kendapa, and uh, it will wonder you to know that uh, since ever since we met them, we've not had any concrete decision. So we are saying that the government must come out to say something. And I believe when such a thing is done, it's going to help all of us. Uh, otherwise, the organized labor is bent on going on strike on the tent. Well, that's the Secretary General of the TUC, Joshua Ansa, who was the first to speak, clearly indicating, yes, government put forward some responses, but it did not meet their expectations, and so they are going on strike. What are those responses and the proposals that government put before them? There's a press statement that came through from the Information Ministry indicating they are surprised that despite government's overtures to labor, they are going on the strike. We have details of that statement. Take a look at this. It says, government will collaborate, continues, uh, with organized labor and other stakeholders in the fight against illegal mining. Government will take steps when parliament reconvenes this month to revoke LI-2462. Government will, re will ramp up its enforcement measures, particularly as it relates to prohibiting illegal mining in water bodies and also forest reserves. The Attorney General will collaborate with the Chief Justice to set up courts dedicated to the prosecution of illegal mining. The Attorney General will collaborate with the Chief Justice to ensure swift adjudication of illegal mining. And government supports the call for all presidential candidates to sign a pact committing to the fight against illegal mining. Also, mining in Ghana from the times of our ancestors have been undertaken without it destroying our water bodies and lands. The Birim Densu rivers we used to drink from, from as children have now been polluted. And that, that's according to what President Kofazo said sometime in 2017. So it's well aware of, of what we're faced with right now. So the development is that the information ministry says they, they, they are surprised at, at this, at this position taken by Labour. And let's have a conversation on, on this right now. And Austin Game is a Labour expert. He's been with Labour every step of the way with their position they took uh, over the period with this strike. Mr. Game, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. You are most welcome. First off, I don't know if you've seen this statement from the Information Ministry, essentially saying that, yes, they made these proposals and these commitments at that meeting with Labour. And so the government is surprised that Labour is still going ahead with the strike on October 10, despite these commitments. Does it surprise you that government is surprised? Extremely surprised. You know, this country, the whole country is virtually on a suicide mission wanting to self murder ourselves by knowingly knowing that we have issued license to people supposedly to do at this now and all small scale mining community mining and yet behind the scene this is what they are doing and, and we are deliberately saying that it doesn't matter now it matters so i think that it's about time we should appreciate this unfortunate situation that has bedeviled all of us. We cannot afford at this point in time to sit aloof and look at this kind of double standard, this kind of dissonance, kind of attitude to be meted out to people who are so innocent and ignorant about this kind of situation. So please, for heaven's sake, organized labor, has done its best where well, we have gotten to they need our support and there is one thing that has been said by the government everything else i think we are on course but one of the things that should not be allowed to dent this whole effort if organized labor and the cso's will be the one putting a certain memorandum something in shape and asking the presidential candidates to sign I think I'll support it. It shouldn't be government now putting something on paper and asking people to come and sign. No. And they have a business to do. They should have stopped it. Is it that people didn't see what was happening behind the Anyanam police station? Is it that people didn't see what was happening on the Konongo Highway? Is it that people didn't see what's happening the, on the Pra River and several other forests, you know, as the case may be? 
We all saw it. I've been flying to Kumasi and Tamale. I saw it. Clearly, we've spoken about it and nothing has been done. And so, therefore, I do not think that it is fair for the flag bearers, including Dr. Baumia, to be invited by government to come and sign. No. Government, if they, if they can sign, then they should do what they have to do now by themselves announcing a ban and stopping the galancy, which they have the capacity to do. I see. So I think organized labor and the CSOs should be the one writing something and asking them to sign, not government. I don't think so. Uh, Mr. Gamay, so there's a development that happened earlier today during that organized labor meeting. We saw some confusion, and which we're going to put on the screen shortly, uh, because some, some members of organized labor labor unions indicated that they weren't consulted before this declaration of a strike. And so they may not be part of the strike if so declared on Thursday, October 10. I mean, one such group is the Technical Universities Teachers Association of Ghana, that's TUTAC. They are quoted as saying that they are against Galamse, yes. They are against all those who are destroying their water bodies and also the environment, and then urge government to use other means to stop illegal mining. Their concern is that they were not in any way consulted before this declaration of the strike. Now, does it concern you that this, this division at, on the front of labor would impact on the kind of message that this strike was going to be sending on, on Thursday? I appreciate the concern they claim they have, but I don't support their cause. This is a suicide mission that the whole nation has been plunged into by leadership. And we are trying to salvage our own and rescue ourselves. And you are saying that uh, until you are able to, somebody is able to jump into the water to rescue you, you would like to stay there. Let them stay there. They cannot disturb the, the peace of this nation. Neither can they disturb us as a people. I think that organized labor has taken a firm decision. It might be supported. If this were to be a salary a demand that they are putting in now and they want to go on a strike, you know I'll be the number one to say that why don't we take this step, this step, this step? Uh, as if I am a supporter of government, as if I am the one working in the office of the president. But this is a suicide mission. And I don't see the reason why I have grandchildren. And I have as many as 15 grandchildren. I don't think it is fair for me to pretend I don't know what is happening. And then people will die before we start screaming left, right, center. If they will not participate, they should stay quiet. All those who want to participate, join hands with not only organized labor, the entire nation is poised for this action. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a consultant to many companies. They have called me and asked me, what should they do? I told them, I also have workers. I have not less than 20 workers who work with me. I've told them, if the time come and you can afford to import water, then stay aloof. Otherwise, participate. I will suffer for it. But that is what it is. I see. But is the decision by organized labor, I mean the TUC, binding on its members, that the, the composition? As in, if TUC, Joshua Ansa comes and says, you are declaring strike October 10, and Tutak says, well, we weren't consulted, so we're not going to take part. Is it binding on them? It's not every union that had opportunity to be at that organized labor. Perhaps they don't even... With, 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 with due deference to them. Maybe they don't understand some aspect of what the labor law talks about. The labor law is very clear. There is TUC, and they have people who are affiliated to TUC. TUTAC is not a member of TUC, but they are members of organized labor. All people who work in the space of labor-related matters if you like industrial relations, are members of organized labor. I had the privilege of being the chairman that wrote the labor law. That's why for the first time in the whole world, it's only Ghana that has an arrangement like this in its labor law with organized labor, which groups all the people. They come under section 113, and there is room there under section 113, which we pick from the directive principles of state policy, policy article 36 of the 1992 constitution and planted it there 
organized labor has the power to invite as many of its members to come together, they will deliberate and engage government. If they are unfortunately not part of this process, it does not mean they don't regard them. They should take their time because they themselves have alluded to the fact that the illegal mining is not something they support. So what else are they looking for? Not consulted? Is that the case? Please, this is not the time for that. I see. If it's on time for that, then, and, and finally, before I let you go, the likes of the Ghana Federation of Labor, I spoke to uh, Abraham Kumsing earlier, he makes the point that all of this is leading to organized labor appearing to be disorganized because look, they, they, they not have a, a united front going into a very crucial position on a sensitive matter as illegal mining. Quickly, how is that concerning? Well, he did not say that. The Deputy Secretary General of Ghana Federation of Labor, Kumsin, Kenneth Kumsin, is a pivotal member of the organized labor, and he represented them at various fora in respect of this matter. I think I have a lot of respect for them. What Abraham should do is to avoid speaking on this matter now and allow the deputy who has been representing that union at that forum to continue to speak. The organized labor is reasonably united. Some of, they have been so reasonable to the extent that they do not want people to die when they, when they begin to take the strike action. Okay. I work, for, I work for the nurses. I work for the lab people. I work for the health sector uh, accountants for the anesthetists. They will all participate, but we are carefully, we've carefully analyzed all these things and we are not going to be that extreme active to cause people to die. If, if the whole public sector suspend working for a day, you think government will be able to stand? And they will respond positively. So buying time is up to them, but I think that they should attach agency to this matter because we cannot be on a suicide mission by ourselves. Mr. Game, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Austin Game is a labor expert. This is your election command center here at Media General. We're taking a position against illegal mining. And this is it. Well, while we are at it, you have a voice and you have a say in what we say here on Ghana Tonight. So my colleague Imano Samani is joining me right now uh, from a location here in Accra interacting with some uh, persons in our People's Voice segment tonight. And this is the People's Voice here on your election command center. Emmanuel Samani is joining me right now uh, with some persons with him. Samani, what are they telling you? Well, yes, thank you very much, Alfred Okanse. Good evening and welcome to The People's Voice here on the Oxford streets of Accra. I am Emmanuel Samani. Now, we're on the streets to find out from, uh, you know, the citizens what they make of organized labor's decision to still go ahead with the intended strike action even though the president asked for more time let's take a listen to uh what some of these views are yeah so what i think is that the the president is doing the right thing by asking the people to give him time to talk to whoever he needs to talk to so that he can come back to them uh, demonstration at this time is, 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 is an issue though they have a point but then once the president is saying that they should give him the time to sort of speak to the people they should give him the benefit of the doubt and then uh, I think uh, that, that's fine but some would argue that he put his presidency on the line over seven years on nothing has been done about it do you think that uh, when he's still asking for more time it's 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 apt yeah so what I would say is that uh, Yes, he puts his uh, presidency on the line by uh, for seven years. He's not sitting down. Some work 
is being done in the in the forest areas and all that. So we can't say that he didn't do anything. In fact, he delegated delegated people to do what they need to do. But if the the result is not fruitful and is asking for just some few days to get things done, I think it's it's in the right direction for him to do that. Thank you, Thank you very much for your sharing your opinions. Well, to my way of thinking, I believe it's something they should have done long, long ago. Because what we are going through now is very, 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 very I don't know, I, I want to use a word. It's very, very, very scary. The future of Ghana is scary when it comes to water, you know, our water resources and whatever. It's very scary. So if they want to go, they should go now. It is, it's not too late. The, to me, they've kept longer, but there's no... You know, it's not too late. They should try and go. All of us should even join. They should go as soon as possible. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So let me also pick your thoughts. Uh, what do you make of organized labor's decision and this whole Galamse fight as a whole? So me personally, I think, you know, Galamse is a very bad thing. That should be like taking a second thought on. Personally, I know the government has made, you know, like several attempts to like, they claim they have made several attempts to keep Galamse and all that. Yes, too. I was at Obuas like two weeks ago and, you know, it's very bad. People mining in the water and what have you. Washing the sand and what, like with mercury, there's mercury, there's lead and everything in the water. Like, it's very bad. It's going to harm lives. Children being given birth with four limbs and all that. Like, it's looking scary, just as my fellow colleague said. So, <laughs> I think the right thing must be done. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, there you have it. You've heard the, the voices from the Oxford Street here. Over to you in the studio, Alfred. Appreciate you. On this one, Emmanuel Samani, and that is the People's Voice here on your election command center. And we bring the microphones to you to have a say in what we say here on Ghana Tonight. Very, very interactive. Coming up next year on Ghana Tonight, anti-LGBTQ plus campaigners say they will go ahead. In fact, they are ready to hit the streets tomorrow to protest the delayed hearing of the cases regarding the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill but the judicial service has been explaining stay with us we'll be back shortly Welcome back to Ghana Tonight. Proponents of the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill have said notice they will hit the streets of Accra tomorrow to protest what they say is a delay in the hearing of the cases before the courts. The judicial service has also now been explaining why the hearing of the cases have delayed. At a press briefing earlier today, the Registrar of the Supreme Court, Justice Ellen Ofei Ayem, explained that the court will hear cases when the parties file the needed documents. Now, the case of Dr. Amanda Odoi versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General was filed on 11 June 2023 on grounds that Parliament had contravened Article 108 of the 1992 Constitution in the passage of the bill. Parliament was supposed to file its defense within 14 days of the notice of the action. However, Parliament filed its defense on 14th March 2024. The Attorney General has not filed a defense in the form of a statement of case. In respect of Richard Sky versus Parliament of Ghana and the Attorney General, it was filed on 5th March 2024. The plaintiff also wants a declaration, among others, that the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill was passed in violation of Article 108 of the 1992 Constitution. Neither Parliament nor the Attorney General has filed a defense in the form of a statement of case. All three <coughs> parties have not filed the needed memorandum of issues that they, need, that they need the court to settle. Now, the Judicial Service issued a statement on the 13th day of September 2024 which gave the above update in respect of the two cases and explained that the parties have not completed the processes they were required to file before the Supreme Court can hear any case. On 1st October 2024, 
the lawyer for parliament filed an application asking the court to give permission for parliament to file its defense even though they had exceeded the 14 days set by the Supreme Court Rule CI 16. Well, this was a press conference earlier today. Dem Sedano is the co-chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption, but this time around he's wearing the hat of the convener of the Advocates for Christ, also one of two leaders of the demonstration tomorrow. He's doing the, this with Sam George, a member of parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, um, also one of eight members of parliament that also uh, sponsored this particular bill. Masirano, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First off, um, for you, one of the major architects of the demonstration tomorrow, what is this demonstration meant to achieve specifically? I mean, two things. One, the Chief Justice needs to expedite the hearings. Uh, she has extraordinary discretionary powers to insist that lawyers file their documentation and do so expeditiously so that the hearings can be done, the case is determined, and the legislative process to conclude should be pro should proceed. So that's the first thing. The second thing is also to get the AG to know, we've taken notice of the fact that uh, they have failed to file their documentation in time, which is one of the reasons the Supreme Court is giving for not having had held the hearing so far. Uh, and given that just last week, um, he was advising the judges to work more expeditiously, whilst the CJ was telling him that it's your prosecutor to file their documents late, which is what has happened in this instance. We think he should be so minded to quickly do what is right in the best interest of the nation by ensuring that the uh, documentation is filed well, and done but, so quickly. But, Otherwise, but, the case but, should be struck. Mr. Out. So uh, there was a press conference earlier today, and uh, the judicial service essentially making the point that neither parliament or the attorney general have filed a statement of case. Also, all the three parties have not filed their memorandum of issues. So the delay is not on the part of the judiciary for that matter, because for them, they've, they've done their bit and they are waiting for the parties to, to do the need for, essentially. So it is the law that is at play. Yes, I know. Have we filed a petition with them before they know what demands we are making? And I don't know what they mean by the laws. Look, last week, the AG was telling them that it is reasonable for them to be able to clear the 140 outstanding Galamse cases within one month. I think that was very profound. I think that was very profound. What Attorney General Godfrey Dami was saying was that our judges have it within their capacity to speed up cases and say, I want to finish this case, make sure you file it on time. And it's happened in quite a number of the election cases where they gave instructions and things were done timelessly. So I don't know what they are talking about. As far as we are concerned, Article 1 1, they hold power for the welfare of the citizens. Sovereignty lies, resides in the people. And the, and the various branches of government exercise this authority we've given them on our behalf and for our welfare. And we are saying that this is an issue of efficient justice delivery. I don't know what they are saying, sidestepping war processes. They should just make sure they do things timelessly. So if the AG could say that one month or four weeks is enough, we are now 10 weeks and counting. I don't think that they have any argument that they can make that to compel us, the 90% right. plus of Ghanaians, to think otherwise. They should get their act together and deliver on it and not, I mean, delay justice uh, and, and tell us that what there's some law. What law are they talking about? Please. Well, so all is set for tomorrow, the demonstration, arrangement with the police and everything? Absolutely. Uh, so, please, we are not the only ones saying it. The AG told them on Friday that they could handle these cases within one month. 140 cases outstanding. We are asking for just two cases, which they themselves said they would ensure there were early trials. Early trial, and now we are looking at 10 weeks. Um, the people of Ghana deserve much more speedy, expeditious actions. Justice delayed is justice denied. 
Tomorrow, 7 a.m. for Brassport, we take off. Uh, we'll veer to the ages to also petition him and say, please, you didn't file your documents in time. Uh, we have heard that that is part of the problem. You file your documentation. Let the Supreme Court do its hearings quickly. Mm -hmm. And let's get these uh, things moving so we can conclude these three years of investment. Right. Uh, perhaps they don't realize that, that there's a lot invested in this. Uh, they are coming to this picture at the tail end. But some of us have been on this for three years. Uh, and we will not appreciate it when people seem to suggest that uh, there are other things more important than what 93% of Ghanaians believe is important. Right. And I, I do appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Adam Senano is the convener for Advocates for Christ, one of the uh, groups also with the members of parliament and other like-minded groups um, pushing for this anti-LGBTQ plus bill to become law. They are hitting the streets tomorrow 7 a.m. We will be there every step of the way with them, bringing you everything you need to know. It appears it's one week, one demonstration, at least over the last three weeks or so. Uh, so we'll keep you updated on how things play out tomorrow. And I want to thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana Tonight. On behalf of the rest of the team, we appreciate your company. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Akonsi. Have a good night.